in the last session we discussed about the construction of the squirrel gauge motor here we should discuss the squirrel gauge rotor that means squirrel gauge rotor means by adding the already discussed squirrel gauge rotor with the stator we will get squirrel gauge induction motor particularly so this squirrel gauge induction motor have some particular features other than other than the slip ring induction motor that's why we should discuss some features here the first feature for the motor to develop torque the number of stator and rotor poles must be equal so this is the most important thing so in order to rotate a motor we require torque torque is a twisting force it is the reason for rotation what is the essential condition the most essential condition the poles of the stator poles of the stator must be equal to the poles of rotor poles of the rotor that is so stator poles must and should be equal to rotor poles if there is not equal of the poles then there is no rotation there is no rotation because equal number of poles will give some rotation so for this example i will clearly explain that so here we have for example two poles we have we have two poles and like this south pole he should be the sun north pole and south pole like this then south pole ripples north pole ripples then the rotor will tries to rotates in this position if have a different different poles for example we have a north pole here and the south pole here and for example you have the four poles here the north pole south pole and north pole south pole then what happen north pole ripples north pole ripples south pole attracts here south pole ripples and north pole attracts north pole attracts then what happen it has two it, it, it has torque and it has torque there is no rotation it is not possible rotation this is not about induction motor just this is an example to understand so to understand why poles are equal so must and should be equal and second condition the same number of stator poles are induced in the rotor poles automatically here the most important thing generally stator has if stator has poles as four stator poles are four generally a rotor also induce the poles of four only rotor will induce the fold that is the very important feature of the squirrel gauge induction motor squirrel gauge induction rotor it is not possible for slip ring it's not possible for slip ring it is only for a square squirrel gauge only for squirrel gauge so if you increase the 10 poles then automatically in the rotor it will induce the 10 poles the number of rotor phases so we should discuss the phases is equal to the number of rotor bars present under a pole so in order to rotor has some phases number of phases it will have the number of phases you know the what is the phase what is the meaning of the phase for single phase the waveform is like this right for three phase the waveform is you have three waveforms three waveforms like this right next for this this is the waveform so this is the construction so in the waveform is single phase like the three phase so for, but in the rotor itself induce the number of phases so here in order to get the number of phases is equal to the the rotor bars present under a pole so for example to understand this the rotor has complete 28 slots 28 slots we have and it is a four pole machine and it consisting of the four poles then how many phases 
number of phases will get the number of slots per pole number of slots per pole here the number of slots are 28 and the number of poles are 4 then we will get the number of phases are the 7 number of phases are the 7 so by that we will get rotor having number of phases we will get okay because rotor will induce some currents automatically it has some phases it has some phases so this is the difference between the rotor phases and the rotor poles here we should discuss here the motor actually is not possible if the stator poles not equal to rotor fold if more if motor action is not possible motor action already we discussed about this point that point is if the stator poles rotor poles are not equal what happened Mot motor motoring action is not possible but the motoring action is possible if number of stator phases not equal to number of rotor phases for example we have one example the stator have some values and rotor have some values so for example if you look at the poles rotor has four poles and stator has four poles and the phases generally it is a three phase induction motor with three phases it will have six phases so for these calculations for these values the rotor will rotates rotor will rotates understand rotor will have some rotation so 4 4 3 3 that is the importance so in order to rotate the rotor there is no requirement of the phase equality phase equality this is also the important point the stator surface and rotor surface are smooth small air gap generally the it very smooth means and it has low air gap due to its magnetizing current is less for example the stator is like this and the rotor is also like this this part is for the stator and this part is for the sorry this part is for the rotor so this stator straight as a smooth is there and it has the less air gap so whenever the air gap is less then automatically it requires the less magnetizing current it require the less magnetic current whenever it is less magnetizing current then the automatically the power factor will be better power factor will be better if the air gap is high then automatically it requires more magnetizing current to send the flux from stator to rotor next the squirrel gauge induction motor doesn't contain windings you know the most important thing it doesn't have any windings because why it is not windings because this is made with the rotor bars this is made with the rotor bars the leakage is less the motor develop high maximum torque during running condition so whenever the winding is there that time we have leakage and maximum torque will be low but here leakage is less so automatically more rotor develop maximum torque high it will develop my ma maximum torque is high during running condition running condition will be developed not starting condition it will be on running condition okay so these are the six important features of the squirrel gauge induction motor so next we will look at the what are the disadvantages by using this squirrel gauge motor the first disadvantage is, is the starting torque is poor why the starting torque is poor means look at here generally starting torque is proportional to the resistance what is this this is the starting torque R2 is rotor resistance rotor resistance whenever the rotor resistance is low then automatically low rotor resistance generally low the starting torque also low and the starting current is very high to limit I starting current 
or status are required so we should use status by starting current low means because just write the starting current formula is like this that is voltage by r2 plus jx2 this r2x2 is r2x2 r2 is you know the resistance of rotor resistance of rotor here x2 also inductance of inductive reactance actually this of rotor so here this r2 is less means whenever starting current of the rotor is very very high so whenever the starting current is high what happen the winding will be winding will be fired so to limit that we require the status and next point so it has the poor power factor it has the poor power factor why look at here the power factor cos phi 2 will be right like this that is cos phi 2 equal to r2 by z2 r2 by z2 what about cos phi 2 cos phi 2 means we can name it as the rotor power factor again that is r2 by z2 r2 is rotor resistance z2 is impedance of the rotor impedance of rotor so it is has it is also having the poor power factor okay so what are the disadvantages the starting torque is poor first thing and starting current is high we, we need to use the status to limit that current and it has the poor power factor so we need to improve the power factor also okay so by this we can give the conclusion the finally the skill gauge induction motor have better running performance when it is running it, it is a, it is very good performance but poor starting performance running performance is good the starting performance is poor that's why we should improve the, the we can name it it is a conclusion of the squirrel gauge induction motor okay this is about the features of the squirrel gauge induction motor i hope all of you understand the session thank you